Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Jones and I'm one of the LAs for Computer Engineering 331 at Penn State. This is the notes, hints, and tips video for Lab 5. Now, Lab 5 is considerably shorter than Lab 4, and if you did your Lab 4 properly, you'll find Lab 5 to be fairly easy. Regardless of this, you should still start as early as you can. Once again, Labs 3 through 5 build off of each other, so if you haven't completed Lab 4, you'll need to do so for Lab 5. In Labs 3 through 4, we created the first four stages of our MIPS pipeline, these stages being Instruction Fetch, Instruction Decode, Execution, and Memory Access. In Lab 5, we will be implementing the final stage, Writeback. Now in Writeback, what we're going to do is select whether we want to write the data memory output or the ALU output to the register file, and then execute the write into the register file. And that's it. This here is the diagram for Lab 5. As you might notice, the only thing new here is this multiplexer here. We're also taking the data from the writeback stage and writing it back into our register file. As always, the slides for this presentation will be made available on Canvas, so feel free to download those and use them as a reference for this lab. Now the only new module that we're going to be making for this lab is our writeback multiplexer, or WBMUX. Here, this acts as a multiplexer, so it has two data inputs, WR and WDO, both of which are 32 bits wide. It has an input for the selector bit, WM2 reg, this is one bit wide, and then the output data, WB data, which is 32 bits wide. The functionality is like that of a multiplexer. If WM2 reg is zero, then WB data is set to the value of WR, and if WM2 reg is one, WB data is set to the value of WDO. Once we've implemented our multiplexer, there are three modules that we'll need to change, specifically the register file, the instruction memory, and the data path modules. First, I want to go over the changes to be made to our register file. Everything that we currently have in our register file will stay there. We aren't going to be removing any of the functionality we created in Lab 3. We are simply adding some additional functionality to it. We will have four new inputs to our register file, specifically WDestReg, which will be 5 bits wide, WBData, which will be 32 bits wide, WWReg, which will be 1 bit wide, and then Clock, which will also be 1 bit wide. WDestReg is going to be the destination register in a reg file that we're writing to, WB data is going to be the data that we're writing to that register, and WWREG is our write enable. We won't have any new outputs for our register file, and like the previous labs, all the registers in the register file should be initialized to zero. We will have a new always block for the write functionality in our register file. The old always block for reading won't be changed here. Our new always block will trigger at the negative edge of the clock. The functionality of this block being that if our write enable signal, WWREG, is 1, we will set the register in a register file at the position indicated by WDestReg to the value of WBData. This will be very similar as to how you did your data memory, but you do not need to change what bits in WDestReg you use for addressing the registers in your register file. You can just use WDestReg directly. I now want to talk about the last two modules that we'll need to change for this lab, those modules being instruction memory and data path. Your instruction memory will have one new instruction after the four instructions from Lab 4. This instruction is outlined in the lab document. Note that this instruction is an add instruction instead of a load word instruction. So if you didn't already implement the functionality for this in your control unit along with the rest of your data path, you'll need to do so for this lab. In your data path, you're going to instantiate the new WBMUX as we described earlier, pass in the new inputs for the register file that were described earlier, and then hook up all the necessary wires to these. The outputs in your inputs of your data path are going to be the same as they were from Lab 4. Just to recap though, the input is going to be clock, and the outputs are going to be all of the outputs from your program counter and all of your pipeline registers. You do not need to make any changes to your test bench for this lab. You can use the same test bench from Lab 4. This concludes the video for Lab 5. These tips here are the same that I presented in Labs 3 and 4, and I'm not going to go over these, but you can look over these again if you'd like to. I do want to note that if you need help, the times of office hours are on the syllabus, along with the emails for the TAs and LAs. Have a great day!